Box is brought to you by Taco Craft Taqueria. Hold the mayo. It's time for Mike Mayo's Lunchbox. Find out what's being served with Mike, Defo, and Luby, the only show that covers food, sports, and the proper maintenance of your car. And now, a man who had the distinction of having an entire health clinic named in his honor, Mike Mayo. I want the flim flam sauce with the awesome bay with Shafafa on the side. Hey, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Mike Mayo's Lunchbox. And we have a little bit of a change of scenery today, although it is a spot that we've been to Many times, Lauderdale by the Sea, the intersection of A1A and Commercial Boulevard. But this time, we're on the opposite side of the street at Taco Craft Taqueria. That's it. With our buddy, Mark Falsetto, CEO, founder of Handcraft and Hospitality. Right. We got Luby on the production board on yes, the headset. Sir. And we've got Jeff Defoe DeForest, resplendent in the Tiger Woods Power Sunday Red. How are you, Defo? Wow. I'm good. I've uh, been anxious statement. to uh, come to this location. Uh, I was overwhelmingly impressed uh, when we went to downtown Broward there on uh, Federal Highway. It was great. And, and that kale salad has been calling my name ever since Mark brought it out, uh, which you, you wouldn't think you would get addicted <laughs> you know, to a salad. You know, when people say Taco Craft, not yeah. many think kale salad, Defo. But it, it was I'm so telling good. you, we yeah, have the was, best salads. It, it was so salads. good. And, you know, I'm always looking for great salad opportunities and places. And <laughs> They, they've, uh, I'm not. Uh, Maybe I should be. Well, I mean, you might, but I, I'm a big fan, and especially around lunchtime. And that, that was one of the sweetest tasting salads that, that I've oh, had. Oh, it's in, great. In We're going to have one today, here. too. Yeah, beautiful. So I'm a little bit on the disabled list eating-wise today, and uh, uh, I had oh, a little man. bit of dental work this morning. I got a new crown being put in. I, um, oh, and, man. and believe it or not, you know, when they do those crowns, they really got to they, oh. they basically drill the tooth down to the nub. Yeah. yeah. And not only is the noise bad, but you get that burning smell. Of, it's oh, just geez. like it's 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 not a pleasant thing. But uh, like a miracle, um, you know, my face, I couldn't feel my face all morning. <laughs> <laughs> but thankfully, the Novocaine has worn off and I am able to speak clearly with good diction. You look and, good. And I'm, your, I'm, your facial expressions are moving a little bit. <laughs> yeah, That's all like, I thought you were having yeah. a stroke for a second. No, yeah. it's, well, it's like a little bit when like When you were Botox, drooling the water so, uh, when you first oh took a God. sip, uh, that yeah. was a little awkward. Yeah, no, I start dribbling. Uh, but, uh, but no, I, uh, you know, a little bit of soreness. I took three Advil. So hopefully I'll be in eating shape and I could maybe do well, a, the good a little news is eating. The tequila is going to numb everything yeah. today. Liquid lunch, I'm surprised baby. it didn't give you something That's stronger, it. son of a dentist. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. I mean, I don't ask for gas or anything because I just, uh, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, I deserve what I get. So I. I... <laughs> well, we have a couple surprises today. So oh, good. Oh, I like oh, a good surprise. Yeah, so oh, and, and, you know, I'm now on Team Part Runway. The family. There you go. We got to oh, get the a... Anthony Runway shirt. We got the Runway shirt, of course part of the whole gang and Anthony Bruno and Pat Marzano and Mark Falsetto. They're running runway 84. They're running these taco crafts. They do a great job with everything. And uh, I'll put in the good word because last night a neighbor of mine had a like girls night out birthday party. Oh, at runway. I, I was there that they were having a good time and they had a good time. And it's always good when I got a text this morning from my neighbor who basically sent me a couple of pictures of the girls night out and Anthony Bruno was in one of them surrounded by a bevy of beauties and uh, but my uh, neighbor Defo said uh, you are a god at runway so uh, wow. wow okay <laughs> well I didn't know what I did who, who did you forget to, to this tip guy. this time I mean, that poor guy checked out waiting for your 20 uh, that made your D, yeah. well, one of the ladies actually asked to sing, get on stage and sing Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, I said. I, that's one thing we don't let happen. <laughs> but, yeah, I put a kibosh of that very maybe quickly. Maybe cut off the wine after that. Yeah, yeah. after the fourth uh, dirty martini. But you could yeah. sing happy birthday, and it looked like a beautiful birthday. Yeah, we birthday did have a birthday. Yeah, like. they did have a birthday. They had a good time. Hey, speaking about checking out, uh, rest in peace. We were very sad to hear oh, the news terrible. this morning about Paul Castronovo's former partner, young Ron Brewer, apparently uh, Terrible news. has passed. I don't know any of the details except for the fact that Paul shared it on the uh, the show's Twitter feed this morning. And Paul, I guess, is involved, obviously. With yeah, one you of guys. our partners at uh, Taco Craft, and our hearts go out to Paul and the whole uh, the whole uh, iHeartRadio family there. Longtime radio partner. You guys worked in that building for a yes. while, right? Yes. Uh, uh, we we uh, frequented the uh, Castronovo show from time to time. And, oh, yeah. Uh, 
young Ron was there uh, still. And we, we always talk about it uh, in the right terms, uh, which is this is the business we have chosen whenever something like that happens in uh, radio, not just the passing, but uh, the dismissal of young Ron was particularly unceremonious as a longtime partner. And uh, they, they let him go from the job, decide to go in another direction. And literally, as he was leaving the parking lot in his car, they had a guy with a can of Krylon down there on the station vehicle that had Paul and young Ron on it, and he just painted over young Ron, and that was it. <laughs> well, and that, that, that was that's what they gave him after like thirty years or whatever. It could was, have been uh, worse. Could have been out. like that Panthers coach you were talking about who just got left on yeah. the side of the road. Uh, they they kicked him off the bus. But Gerard hey, Gallant, yeah. Speaking of you know um, you know former radio figures, and obviously you guys, you and Luby spent a lot of time in radio. Um, walking down here to get to Taco Craft, I was reminded about our. Late friend Norm Kent, of course, was Neil Rogers' agent. And then Norm also dabbled in local radio and is kind of the reason why the lunchboxes all gotten together. But oh. one of Norm's favorite p- places that he liked to go to uh, was uh, Diner by the Sea, which oh, is Diner right by down. the Sea, great the spot. Next plot. Yeah. I have never been in there. It yeah. looks like a very quaint place. Yeah, cool uh, little spot. When we were building this restaurant, we were going there all the time okay. for breakfast and good, stuff. Looks yeah, like a stuff. good basic breakfast joint. Get yep, your eggs yep. and uh, eggs, bacon, keep it simple, yeah. American traditional breakfast. Uh, but Norm, I can't believe it's coming up, I think, on the one year anniversary of his passing. So, wow. uh, goes uh, past. again, this is why my tagline at the end is enjoy every sandwich or as the case is today, enjoy every taco. What do we have in front of us, Mark? Fels? Well, great. listen, Smells we have a great. couple of different things that we because the last three episodes, we've pretty much tried most of the menu. Yeah. So here's some <laughs> stuff that we Each haven't time, tried. Yeah. So this is going to be now we're going to go outside the box a little bit okay. because the main event is not from Taco Crafts tonight. Chef Rob is doing something special for you today. So we're going to start off. This is our Korean short rib. Oh, nice. This is going to be certified Angus beef, boneless short ribs. Sliced paper thin. It's marinated for 24 hours. We're going to a little goji jung aioli. Oh, There's I love some a good pickled goji veggies jung. underneath, some yeah. coleslaw, and some green onion. So this is a, one of our probably, I think it's the, either tied for number one or number two, our most popular taco. Okay. Sweet and heat. And Sweet again. and spicy glaze on the on the Korean. Not mm-hmm. your typical tacos here mm-hmm. at Taco Craft. This is the taco of the month. Okay. This is the Philly cheesesteak taco. Oh, which oh, cheese right, we, we are doing some... Uh, <laughs> Our guys over at Allen Brothers gave us some prime rib eyes. Oh, nice! Some, they shaved it for us, so we decided to do some uh, some uh, taco with it with some uh, caramelized onions. There's actually, some fried onions oh, on wow. top. Oh wow! You got the crispy yeah, ones on crispy top. Crispy and 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 marinated uh, caramelized. Yeah. So that's a Philly cheesesteak taco. And because we do have some other things coming today. This is our impossible gringo taco, oh, okay. oh, which is vegan, right. it's vegan <laughs> but it's actually my favorite. Really? really? And I'm a maniac meat eater. Okay. Yeah. 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 Wow. No, I mean. And we're going because we're going to go into some meat later. So this is this, this, oh, vegan. This is a true vegan taco, which a lot of people don't know. We have about six or seven vegan items, yep. vegan cheeses, vegan cremas. We treat the impossible meat like meat. So we braise it, right. cook it down for hours on time with oh, all the wow. Mexican spices. That's going to have a vegan crema, vegan cheese, and a, kind of like a, your typical Taco Bell gringo taco, but made of mm-hmm. vegan. Yeah, great idea. And this is our vegetarian taco, which is a mushroom Ooh. confit that oh. he does. The mushroom confits the mushroom. It's going to have roasted corn, and that's going to be a truffled homemade truffle crema with cotija cheese. So this is vegetarian, not vegan. This is vegan. So and mushroom, these are your meat. Are there any black beans on there? Or what do no I black spot? beans. That's no. exotic mushrooms. Oh. Cremini's, uh, oh, cremini's wow. shiitakes. He does a full exotic blend. Which you normally wouldn't see at a, at a taco restaurant. Now, notice how you strategically place all the meat stuff near me, <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> and all the vegan vegetarian stuff yeah. near Defo. But I am intrigued. Can you? I think and we and should I go in here before it gets I don't, cold. I don't mind your pause on yeah, it. Yeah, let's go, Defo. Can you just I think like you should throw one of those impossible ones? Now, now I, they've made yeah. great advances with the impossible. Back, wait till you taste it. Back when I was a food writer at the Sun Sentinel, I did a whole series on. One week I went uh, vegan. Oh, actually, I went vegetarian for two weeks. I ended yes. up gaining five pounds because when you go vegetarian vegan, uh, it's easy to fill up on a lot of the starch. You know, it's and, a lot of starch, it's a lot of carbs, and actually, it's not as uh, you and, know. And depending on what kind, like if you eat just a pure like vegetable diet, that's fine. But some of these meats, uh, I'm the substitute meats. Look, the flavor they've really made. Let's big go advancements. check it out. Let's check you, it out. They have made big advancements. My problem is when you read the ingredient label. It's you see these uh, things that you don't even know what they are, and it's kind of the best fake meat that a laboratory can uh, produce. Uh, but it's delicious. Well, all right, well, that's fantastic. fantastic. Wow. Isn't that fantastic? Absolutely great. So you know, corporate chef Robin says everything right. Oh yeah. And he says, "I said, what are you doing with the impossible?" And he goes, "I'm braising it. I'm cooking it down with tomatoes, San Marzano tomatoes, the chow tomatoes. We use it runway. 
and he's cooking it down for four hours at rum. It already comes cooked. What, what do you, do you think? About? What do you think that texture uh, defaulted? Yeah, interesting. I think it's fantastic. You know what? Um, the Mustang's big with these Impossible Burgers that she's been buying, and. Uh, Mustang. I, I was very, very surprised at, at how tasty they were and how close they were, approximating the satisfaction that you would get from uh, chowing down on a real beef burger. So and, and this the is right there. And the impossible meat um, absorbs the flavors. So yeah. yeah, when you can tell that he does all the braising, the sautéing with all yeah. the different flavors, it picks it up. Um, I oh. don't want to fill up on. No, that. we have a lot of surprises <laughs> for you today. I'm going to go in. I want to try this short rib one. Let's do it. Yeah, and go for it. Luby, did down. you want to Luby try? needs a plate, uh, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we yeah we're going to get a plate here, too. I'll yeah. get plates. Chef, can we get a plate? I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, they're leaving very, me out. Very good. The yeah, seasoning on this is you, just yeah. absolutely great. You can't great, see huh? Luby's yeah. face right now, but it is very hangdog and yeah. for a lawn, like yes. saying, oh, there goes all my food because we've got. It's only three. It's fine. I don't mind. No, we'll We should eat the show. Yeah, we'll bring a couple steak knives. Here, I gotta, I gotta try this. I gotta try this Korean oh, here, short let's try rib. Let's try a Korean short rib in, here in the proper manner. Oh, well, uh, you want to wait a little bit? Yeah, yeah. Let me, okay, uh, let me go. get uh, this thing going here. That, that yeah, was fantastic. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, try I'm gonna go so into the Korean here. short rib. Sweet and spicy Chang, uh, sauce and some of the slaw underneath. And... Mm. Oh yeah, that's me. <laughs> grabbing this one. That really nice thin uh, short rib. I guess like. Sometimes they call it like bulgogi meat or whatever. The Similar, yeah. Bones Similar, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Marinated, flat top. Mm -hmm. And you're going to see the good. vinegar, a little vinegar, sweet, salty, mm -hmm. spicy vinegar from the pickled veggies. So I, I think we've talked about this last time, but I'm, again, I'm curious. I, I know your CEO, founder. Um, when you guys are very creative with the tacos, you're very creative with the dishes. Who Chef, I know, is very yeah, talented. Yeah, Chef Robbins puts it all together. So he comes up with all of it. Yeah, so it'll be based on our influences travel so you know this summer i did hit the normal circuit chicago new york las vegas go all around to <laughs> the big hitters come back with a lot of ideas and that say, R &D really is a bitch isn't it yeah, <laughs> rd is a little tough <laughs> get all my restaurants lined up next month in uh shy town but oh uh, yeah and we, he makes it happen do you guys test stuff do you before you do you do special like before yeah, yeah. you so, yeah, throw so stuff out we, there our, for a taco before it hits the menu first of all it goes on try different creative version of different things and then we run it on special. Every month we have a taco of the month. Then we narrow it down to like what was the best sellers, right? Okay. So all these tacos, like the Korean short rib, um, the crispy chicken here at Mike's Hot Honey, which is a fried mm. chicken taco, um, they were all specials at one point or another. The Smash Burger was our number one selling taco. Yeah, that Smash Burger one. That yeah, was that like was cool. Yeah, that was a great. Certain yeah. Big uh, item at a uh, well, I'll just say it was, it was like a Big Mac. It was like a better Big Mac. Thank you. We could take, I love we could that. Take this one. So I wanted to get my daughter in here to try that because she liked some of those smash burger type things. Sure, and, sure. Uh, we'll, we'll get her in here one of these days. Um, this thing, uh, I love just eating it kind of open face, and you can use a fork and knife because yeah, there's like um, literally two, three ounces of, of meat in there. It's great. If, yeah, if you want to, you know. Yeah, yeah. I'm now going to be watching my carbs. I'm in one of those modes. Well, I think, is he down to it. the countdown 60 days now? He's got 40, um, 30, pound, 30 days now. No, no we are that, cutting that, it close. That's off. This is a whole other Are we moving the uh, the goalpost now? He, he lost the bet, but uh, he, he's got, <laughs> okay, so that's not over He's got yet, another but, mission okay. now. He's got another no, mission. No, no, I, I am on, I need to, you know, just uh, moderate my ways and going to be watching carbs. And this, just by itself, yeah, it's just so good i would order this as a main course uh if or for but very popular yeah but very obviously popular. tacos no, i'll do, I'll do a game. whole bowl of the uh ask mm. him to do the short ribs for me mm. how, how many varieties do you have all together i think uh, tacos we have about 14 different styles of tacos awesome. and yeah. then plus three of the gourmets so about uh yeah about 16 17 at all times fantastic no the flavor Served individually in is, is amazing a lot of people you can buy them individually you can do the platter which is you pick any three Comes of rice and beans for twenty bucks. So oh yeah, wow! And 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 that doesn't exclude the the high end ones, the steak and the short ribs and everything's included. Yep. Nice. So Good this deal. here, this is this is the test. See the crunch there. So this what is, do we got? This is just the this cheese. Is, oh. No, this is actually our quesadilla. I'm not sure what he did on the inside today, but we use a uh, charred poblanos. We we'll do a black bean, caramelized onions. I'm going in. Waxcata cheese, manchego cheese. He does a whole cheese blend, and that's our, our artisanal quesadilla. Mm. And uh, and again, what do we have? This is the array. Well, we brought your favorite. Uh, we brought the uh, sweet mango salsa. We have some pico sweet mango salsa. We're gonna do our roasted tomato sauce on our salsa verde. Right, the so. mango salsa was fantastic because, and, and I know my mayo is not a big wasn't always a big fan of mango slash sweets with 
uh, savory, yeah, savory, savory yeah. stuff. But it just the the mango again. You guys take more in South Florida, so fresh mango. It adds like a freshness and a lightness to the salsa that, at first glance, sounds interesting. And it's really good. And it works really well with your chips. And my wife literally was like, I would yeah. please bring a tub. I'm like, I don't think they sell it by the tub, but I definitely will try and bring some home because she adored that salsa. Now, this quesadilla, I know, <laughs> like, I, I is it handheld? Is it finger food? Is it fork and knife? You know, I, it resembles a slice for a, of pizza. for a second, but, you know, our quesadillas really don't have too much flop, charred, you know. I usually have one or two bites, and then I go with a fork and knife. But that's not your typical quesadilla you're going to get around town here. This is a... And gourmet case. No, but it resembles to me like a pizza slice. Yeah, so for as sure. a native New Yorker, I'm yeah. want to fold it. Kind of just. Uh, Did you want to try a little nature. quesadilla today? Or? Yes, yeah, I'm a big quesadilla yeah, there fan. You go. Here we go. Fantastic. And this is going to have. It looks like our braised chicken even, inside. I'm is that the braised chicken it. inside that yeah. one? Yeah. Wow, that's really good. By the way, the best house margarita I think I've had in any restaurant right here. I'm not saying that because we're here and Mark's sitting next to me, but uh, always nice when the thing just is right on the money. And, you know, sometimes you get the look when you order the house margarita and they give you that look like yeah. uh, like you were at the doctor's office. Yeah, and sure, you're getting sure. Blank blood reading. No, the but, secret is with the good margarita is a fresh lime juice. And uh, actually, there's a true story. We couldn't keep up. And our friends down the street at Kennesaw. Okay. We do fresh Kennesaw lime juice. Local. Oh, right nice. Enough. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. Have you ever telling up, like, what's your big, how many margaritas, house or any variety, have you sold in your biggest week? And was it, I guess, during a spring break week? So... Last week, believe it or not, was our busiest day in history at this location. Ah, busiest wow. day. Busiest I mean, week. It's not busiest that shockingly. Week. This yeah, is like a spring week, break, spring freaking break. central right yeah, here. So we average between 500 and 1,000 people a day here wow. for, for, uh, for seven consecutive days last Unbelievable. week. Unbelievable. Wow. Yeah, busy week. Crazy week. And I think on Taco Tuesday, uh, we have the discounted margaritas, I think at 6 or $8. Don't quote me. Mm -hmm. um, I, this location did almost 1,000 margaritas wow. in one day for the... Uh, for uh, Taco Tuesday last That's week. That's sweet. Yeah. That well, is some good. A uh, lot of flavors going on here. We got a lot of exciting stuff. No, this, Chef Robin. This, is yeah, the this Philly cheesesteak, our friends at Allen Brothers. Very how tasty. I, how different. did I miss that? So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm going to get a. I'm going to bring in the auxiliary plate yeah. because this is the new me. I'm not going to. No, it's one finish bite. Anything. It's one like bite. tapas. One bite next. One it's bite like next. Our, uh, pizza loving friend. So we got the uh, one bite. Everybody this is going to be our Philly cheesesteak taco with the crispy onions, right. caramelized onions. I'm going to take yeah, one of for these. That one. Yeah, go and for I'm going to squeeze one. a little lemon on top. And I'm going to take one. You can leave it. You can leave yeah, it. This oh. is an interesting flavor. Yeah. a little bit of cheese sauce. Yeah. Um, again, I like anything with the crispy onions. Grab this. I'm so, Defo, you kind of That's all good. Thank you. Quesadilla is fantastic. That tastes right. That nice? uh, I mean, one of the best uh, you could possibly Thank find you. anywhere. Now that we're doing the braised chicken. Uh, we do the, uh, I think it's about a half, four hour braise with adobo. Oh, it's marinated so, for 24 hours. So, with this cheesesteak, would it be appropriate to put a little dollop of the I'd probably say salt? no. Okay. <laughs> I, think, I, I, did, I, just, I just tried it. I really want to taste the meat. You see the meat kind of come through. Alan Brown's got some some ribeyes. They shaved them up. Oh, wow. I mean, <laughs> very nice. The meat is a star. <laughs> yeah. yeah, different, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm enjoying it. Yeah. So, okay. Again, you're involved in all these different restaurants. How and I find that when you walk in, they all know you. Yeah. So I'm how do on. you get around to all these places? And it seems like you're consistently moving, keeping your hands on it. But it, it feels like you're not told. You're not like hovering. So how do you? So they work best when I'm not hovering. That's what I figured <laughs> out over the years. So my management style has uh, changed over the years. So uh, I learned how to not to micromanage and trust the team. And you know, if you had a great team around, you can uh, achieve great results. So uh, I'm in the stores every single day. I pick a different store every day or two, three stores today. So today I'm here, then I'm going to Pizza Craft, okay. and then after Pizza Craft, after lunch today, Pizza Craft, then today I'll be at Runway. Okay. Tomorrow I'll be at Runway. Tomorrow lunch I'm at Victoria Park. The weekend I'm going to be in Plantation, so I just bounce around. Sounds like my typical day. Three yeah. restaurants a day. <laughs> yeah, three, three restaurants a day, yeah. Only you own them. You yeah, just yeah, yeah. I don't know if he's eating all of them either. You're our favorite. <laughs> yeah, they love you. Yeah. <laughs> When you see prototype, they got his face next. So this is our uh, prototype customer. <laughs> so I'm going to say, even though the pure cheesesteak taco is very nice. Yeah, that Korean. I think, I think a little little drop of it, the it tomatoes doesn't hurt. It sauce doesn't hurt. does not hurt at all. Yep. Um, again, I'm a steak pizzaiola guy. And this yeah, is kind of like oh, the Mexican version of a for a real steak. treat today. So. This area right now, not sure, just not to shift gears really quick. I know yeah. we've been doing the plant, uh, the Victoria Park location. Then we're gonna yeah. do the 
plantation location next. Well, well I was going to ask you about Coral Springs. My wife Coral Springs, we're looking there by mid to end of June. Okay. Right now, you know, construction. I'm going to bring always... my 81 cents to plantation for the entertainment. Oh, that's fee. right. Yeah, no, God, that's a touchy situation. <laughs> Has nothing to do with us. We have no, no control it's, over it's it. It's a developer-imposed <laughs> yeah. fee. But, but let me tell you we'll something. Let's, let's, let me tell you we'll, something. We'll save that for that. They one. have music now every mm. single week. Yes. They're doing closures. They're bringing world-class talent. Oh, so they're actually so, oh, applying the they, fee So they've taken all the fees and all the entertainment and the fun, and now they're they're doing three, four shows a month. It's actually a really cool shopping and, center. Like, I'm not going to lie. I went there with my in-laws. Okay. Oh, it's, it's a great. Lot it's of filling fun. in. It, Families you come. Were one of the people first go open. out there. And while we're here, just to let you know, yeah. we've moved our block party. That's usually every year at Victoria Park. We're moving it to Plantation. We're closing down the entire oh, wow. Plantation Walk. When is that? Uh, that is going to be Sunday, May 5th, Cinco de Mayo. It's going to be on That's a logical. Sunday. It's on a Sunday. It's going to be an all-day party starting nice. at noon to 11. We have uh, three, four different bands, three different DJs. I think we might have to do a live say, broadcast. We should do a broadcast. I think we should. I, was I think say we, we should. Do a it's, it's on a Saturday. It's on, it's on a it's Sunday. Sunday. Cinco de oh, Mayo. I'm the after the Derby, too. Uh, there you go. And we, hopefully, we'll be a wash. Listen, I know we're not signing anything, but this sounds like no, a plan. No, this sounds <laughs> like a plan. <laughs> I like it. All right. Yeah, we are. All you right. I'm, in. I'm in if you're I, in. That's my favorite holiday because they're celebrating Cinco de Mi. We're going to have. <laughs> I got Man. mariachis, bands. I got DJs. We're going to have food tents, churro stands, wow. uh, different types of street corn stands, four outdoor bars. You know, we're expecting to be a big one. It's going to be a big one. Uh, that's, and nothing like that in, in West, uh, West Broward. And I tell you, every once in a while, you get the luck of the, well, luck of the Irish because this year St. Patty's Day was on a Sunday, which is a good day to. Encourage people to come out and spend the whole day. And same thing, Cinco de yeah. Mayo on a Sunday. Oh yeah, is a beautiful thing. And boy, people love Mexican food. I mean, Italian food. You guys are pretty shrewd. Just uh, you're in the Italian game and the Mexican cuisine game. Pizza, and, pizza, and people Mexican, love that. Italian. People love that sushi I mean, craft. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I love the sushi. Joking, but... not joking. So, no, no. <laughs> no, I mean honestly. Yeah. Well, now that you're talking about new concepts, um, anything that you can announce i know you kind of mentioned something on the last show that you're getting you know you have some big plans in the work is are, are they gestating are they almost uh, uh, ready to be announced or? Very, very close and okay. it's going to be very carnivorous and okay. very new york okay and okay. i have a little surprise for you today too to talk about okay oh, I, like, oh, yeah. I like the so sound of well while we're talking about uh new york and meat how's your trip to new york mike oh. i don't know if you probably oh, yeah, talked, you about talked about this week did you talk about this week yeah, we, I haven't talked about it lately. I did want to bring it up because, you know, the, as I mentioned, I went to um, Le Bernardin, which is one of the top ranked restaurants. It's a three, Chef Mich Report. three Michelin star. Chef, uh, Chef Eric Report, Report. Yep. is uh, used to be friendly with uh, Anthony Bourdain, was on his show all the yes, time. French born chef. And he came, took over. Le Bernardine relatively early on. It was uh, originally founded by a brother-sister combination, uh, uh, the Lacoses, and uh, unfortunately, uh, like he, the uh, brother, uh, passed at a young age, and Eric came in. Anyway, it's been at a top-level restaurant, Midtown Manhattan. I went there, had a fantastic eight-course tasting menu wow, with wine for lunch. Thank you, Val, again. I'm forever indebted for that. Uh, beautiful I have to do lunch. one little tip about the yeah. Bernadine. I'm yeah. not sure if you know. So I was reading a, uh, one of my restaurant books and listened to it. They talk about consistency. Yeah. And that restaurant actually has a room. I don't know if it's in the back or the basement where the fish comes in. Mm -hmm. And so only we have one guy on the team that cuts the fish. Fish, mm -hmm. receives the fish cuts the fish and he's in this 10 by room 50 by 50 room stainless steel all the way around he checks every single fish cuts every single fish and he's been there for i think 15 or 20 years he's yeah the only and that, that kind that of consistency you can see on every the plate yeah. the amount of labor and care and prep that goes into it. and whoever's yeah. doing their sauces their sauciers are unbelievable because yeah you know they did this kind of like a uh, like a horseradish sauce that went to, with this uh, salmon dish that was topped with caviar. Oh, beautiful. They had, uh, it's just like a, a poached lobster that was in like a lobster. Uh, Three Michelin broth. stars, correct? Three Michelin stars. And wow. uh, the New York Times, their critic, longtime critic Pete Wells, uh, who I've, I've never met but I respect, he put together his, his list of top 100 restaurants in New York. Yeah. And it was a really eclectic list that included places. Different price points, all, too, his list. All oh, five yeah. boroughs, all price points, all ethnicities. But number three was Le Bernardino. Yeah, he just says wow, this place yeah. has stood the taste of time. Yeah. Holy crap. What is all right. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. I don't know if you guys can see <laughs> this right, right here. I think I have an idea of the kind of place they're opening. <laughs> now, so you could. 
Well, well this you can find on the yeah, menu at Runway 84 because when you did the reboot, you said, I want to bring in a top-notch steak program. Is this related this is to that? This is it. This so, is it. So this oh. is actually so since you're wearing the Runway shirt, you just came back from Brooklyn. Yeah. Chef <laughs> said, you know what? They've tried the whole menu. I got some dry-aged 42 ounce porterhouses. Oh my God. Are you kidding These me? These are Chicago stockyard wow. beef cut from the same fabric here that does the Peter Lugers. This is, uh, we don't have big broilers here, but Chef right. cooked it here at, at uh, Taco Bell no, he, for us. He's right. very talented. Yeah, this will be charred, medium rare. Looks uh, great. Dry aged. It's going to be 70 day aged. It's 30 wet, 40 dry. Okay. Wet USC, and dry. Wet and dry, and it's USDA pure prime. So here's what I'm going to do. This, of course, is the strip sirloin side. Yeah. This is the tenderloin side. Yes, sir. I'm going to go in and get Ooh, that. Look at the juices are literally oh, spilling. Oh, 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 that's, oh, I that's can smell bad. the, the juices are literally oh, actually, spilling. Actually, I messed oh. up. I want the, the one that yeah, has. One end. Not, yeah, the, one uh, end. not the end. And then I'm going to take that little nub of the sirloin oh, right there. We there. Go. And then I'm going to tell oh, my cardiologist that my <laughs> blame Mark. My, Everybody <laughs> blames me. My, uh, <laughs> my cholesterol and, and some green and some greens. Oh, look here. Oh, there you go. There's why we need a little bit of that. Look at that. Look at that. From ourselves and that tower of kale. That tower of kale. It's like a Christmas tree. Doesn't look good. I mean, it really was great. Yeah, it's. Uh, I'm gonna pass that over to Defo in a minute. I'm just gonna. You, you could just leave and it. These are like right. a South Florida it's staple, a nice yucca fry. I'm gonna go around to the side here. Yeah, a couple put spoons. A little of that. That's good. And Steak's then we'll uh, we'll hand that over to Defo. I know he is just. He's yeah. a big. We're gonna break he, it just like salad the fan and kill. Salad it's all good. Um, this might be a good time to take our first break. Yeah, why Perfect not? time. And then we'll come back with some hot topics, uh, restaurant oh. hot topics for Mark Falsetto. We always like to get the. Uh, Views of restaurateurs about various Let's issues that have been burning up the internet on the Let's See Controversial. Well, yeah. Controversial. I'm honest to which is cool. I like I uh, Yeah. I'm but not going to sugarcoat it. That's it. It's sure. all good. Hey, and uh, <laughs> before we do that, let's just put in a good word about our friends at the Visit Lauderdale Food and Wine Festival. They are going to be, uh, it's not just a one week event in January anymore. They're doing things year round. And the next event upcoming is a cocktail class at Primo Liquors in Weston oh, on Weston, Weston Road. We love the guys at Primo, uh, Sam and Koshel. Uh Well, the Weston Road location on <laughs> April 13th at 12 noon, they're going to be hosting a Elevating Your Brunch Cocktail Game uh, uh, class. That's also going to include a little bit of drinking, but also learning how to make things beyond the usual mimosas and Bloody yeah. Marys. You're going to be learning how to make things like a Kier Royale, along with some other stuff, including a espresso martini. Uh, the price is $65 per person, 21 plus only. Uh, it's going to be a really fun time. Go online to VLFoodWine.com. Again, VLFoodWine.com. Great to event. Get your tickets Not for that blast. event. Yeah. It's going to be fun. Tomorrow. You'll meet new Great people. Guy. You get to taste a little bit of what you create. And then you will be armed with all kinds of new recipes to impress your friends and loved ones the next time you host a Sunday brunch. Uh, again, vlfoodwine.com. And uh, you host, you have brunches gonna, here, of course. Oh, yeah, Sunday all sorts. Yeah, weekend. of course. Yeah, yeah. Sunday brunch, Taco Tuesday, big happy hours. Yeah. Yeah. Do you do Saturday brunch or is it's it all Sunday? weekend? Saturday, all weekend, Sunday, because that's what people want. Now. Mama's uh, sangrias, uh, and? mimosas, and spritzes now. Oh, Ooh, yeah, nice. all spritzes. Nice. 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 spritzes. Sounds light oh, and thank you. lovely. All, all right. right, we'll be back with more with Mark Falsetto here all at right. Taco Let's Craft Lauderdale by the Sea after these words. And yes, all right, thank babe, you. I have the mango salsa. She's like <laughs> on the chat line asking for the mango. We salsa. are going to bring a court home <laughs> for you with the mango salsa. All right, steaks. For Gilbert's 17th Street Grill, you know me. I love family-run places with quality food at fair prices served with passion and pride. And that's why I love Gilbert's. For more than a decade, Lenore, Beth, and Richie Gilbert have been serving up the best burgers, wings, ribs, salads, and desserts. It's a fast, casual spot. Everything prepared fresh to order from an immaculate open kitchen. They're at 1821 Cordova Road in Fort Lauderdale in the Cordova shops just south of 17th Street. Open every day but Sunday. One of my favorite burgers in South Florida. Big, round, juicy pucks of 100% Angus beef, char-grilled to perfection. And don't miss the sweet potato fries on the side. They're legendary. Go to Gilbert's, feast, and be happy. Tell them the Lunchbox sent you.
When I'm looking for some wicked good food for a wicked good lunch, there's only one place to go. That's Wicked Cheesesteaks in Fort Lauderdale. It's at 4824 North Federal Highway, just south of Commercial Boulevard and across from Holy Cross Hospital. My friend Brian there, he will hook you up with some really tasty treats. They've got cheesesteaks just like the best you can find in Philly, along with lobster rolls, because that's where he's from, Maine originally. And they have wings and pizza and everything you want to have a really good time. Wicked Cheesesteaks. They're open every day, but Tuesday, check them out online, wickedcheesesteaks.com. Tell them the Lunchbox sent you. If you're looking for a great place for steaks, seafood, and more, go to Tropical Acres Steakhouse and Butcher Shop. It's at 2500 Griffin Road in Dania, just west of I-95 in the airport. They've been there a long time, since 1949. That means they're doing something right. You'll get old school hospitality from the Studiali family, along with great value for tremendous service. Of course, you could also go into the bar for happy hour every day, four to six, and they have great value all night long. Also, a butcher shop that's open every day from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., except Sunday. The dining room is open every day at 4.30, except Sunday. Go to Tropical Acres. Tell them the Lunchbox sent you. For an exquisite sushi experience. Kaizen Sushi Bar and Grill in Fort Lauderdale is the place to go. 5640 North Federal Highway, just north of Commercial Boulevard. Chef owner Hui Lam, he's a sushi savant, slicing and serving pristine fish and seafood flown in directly from Japan and around the world. Nigiri, sashimi, special rolls, and omakase dinners. He's ruined me from going anywhere else. It's that good. Open seven days for dinner and also for lunch. Even if you're not a sushi fan, they have great cooked options, including steaks, chops, rice and noodles, and other Japanese dishes. It's fantastic. For reservations and information, go to kaizenflorida.com. Tell them Mike Mayo and the Lunchbox sent you. Delicious Mexican food with innovative twists. Margaritas with a medley of tongue-tingling flavors. I'm talking about Taco Craft, Taqueria, and Tequila Bar. The place to go on Taco Tuesday and every day. It's located at 510 North Federal and Highway in Fort Lauderdale and also in Lauderdale-by-the-Sea at Plantation Walk and soon in Coral Springs. Taco Craft has specials every day, including bottomless drinks for a Sunday brunch and Taco Tuesdays with their $4 premium tacos, including their new Berea tacos with bone marrow broth. Oh, it's so good. They've even made a taco lover out of me, and they've got so much more, including fajitas, that open face smashed cheeseburger tortilla that's new, and a guacamole sample that's an explosion of flavors. Kitchen is open late. There's delivery and takeout. For more information, go to tacocraft.com. Tell them Mike Mayo, the Lunchbox, sent you. Oh, well, another day, another feast. <laughs> we're back, we're back, we're back. Taco craft. I mean, when you use terms like main event, you know, yeah. you're in for something. This is outstanding. I mean, <laughs> what do you think, Defi? I know you're not the biggest red meat eater, but when you no, do I, eat I red am, meat, I, I am a big high fan. quality. I, lo I love great steaks. I always have been. Uh, I, I don't eat a lot of it anymore, but uh, when I do, I really enjoy it if it's top, top quality. Thank you. Uh, this this is as good a steak it's, as you can get. It's a anywhere. knockout, yeah, and it, really uh, is, yeah. it, it already knocked out. I think the temporary crown. <laughs> I, didn't think, <laughs> I didn't think I was going to be able I to apologize. eat today. I Not apologize. only am I eating, I'm like devouring the steak, and I'm supposed to keep it on this side of the mouth. It, and, and I think even though the tenderloin side is so tender, it just melts, and the, of course the sirloin has Hello, a little chew, bit of that yeah. chew, which yeah. you want. It's got that great old, you know the. The dry age the dry has age that taste, little, yeah. that little. We call it a funk, but it's not a bad thing because it's like the best in cheeses and things that age. It just has that. I mean, if you're into good, high quality beef, and oh, you yeah. said you explained to me that Chef Robbins, he yeah, we do it. A, a beef tallow. We 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 we, we brush with a little bit of a beef tallow when they come out of the broiler at Runway. So just if you need well, that's, a that's bit. the steak from Runway. He just knew you were coming here tonight. So he's like, yeah, I haven't seen Mike in a month. I'm bringing him the steak. Like my I neighbor. I think he's upset that you haven't been to Runway in a while. So. <laughs> oh. yeah, well, it's on the books. It's going to be coming back. And my daughter is graduating high school soon. And then, you know, it is one of her favorite places. So I have a feeling for a graduation a day <laughs> or a Mother's Day, we might be heading into All right. uh, uh Runway 84, and I do love – we were in there last Mother's Day uh, with oh, that's my right. we daughter and her mom. Yep. And um, what I was impressed with is because you were open all day, it wasn't crazy crowd. It that's was, like, very is, nice and you staggered. You know, Saturdays are busiest day of the week, but we open up a little earlier. So some of these holidays and Saturdays are open earlier, and it, it's more spread out. It's and not I, just bang at one shot. So I remember. I think we got in at 5 o'clock, and it was beautiful. Perfect. I mean, yep. it was just, yep. like, beautiful pacing, great food. I love – you know me. I'm, I love – 
classic old school Italian American joints, and that's what Runway eighty four is. And you guys are just killing it there every night. I mean, it's oh my, like, oh boy, yeah, very busy, yeah. Yeah, very busy. Um, I think last night we had about almost four hundred covers on wow. a Wednesday night, and tonight <laughs> and uh, next few days five hundred each night. <laughs> This is oh. not even a weekend. I, I mean, well, tomorrow, Friday, Saturday, yeah, no, obviously. It's, it's, it's but, been crazy. It's but been the very way busy. you do it on the Wednesdays and Thursdays, I mean, every time I drop in there and you know, well, every, have a drink. A lot of people say, oh, I got one coming on a Friday, Saturday night. Listen, every night's the same there. We got the big show every night, 8 o'clock. So if you're too, you have the same experience on a Tuesday than you do on a, on a Wednesday, uh, Friday or Saturday. So the entertainment, it's Mitch, is it? Or what's his Mitch name? Mitch Franco's there yep. three, uh, four days a week. Yep. Um, I, we bring in uh, a couple guys from the Des Durant from The Voice. Uh, we also fly some guys in from uh, New York and Nashville, Chicago, um, California. Sweet. Yeah, we have a rotating list of uh, good good uh, musicians. Very good. Yeah. All right, it's time now to get into some of the hot topics of the week that have been on the Let's See What's South What's pissing Florida. off South Florida? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, the group pisses me off, and that, the feeling is mutual. Some people are like... They quit the group. They, they, I love the people who feel they need to announce that. The new I'm one is done I'm a, with this I'm stupid. No, the other one says I saw the other day. I feel targeted for post and review. You want to <laughs> criticize, but can't take criticism. That's right. the new one. Oh, that's the, and that will get into later. That's the the, the that's our friends favorite. at the Catherine. The victim mentality. <laughs> oh my oh, god! Boy. Look, and I told them I put it on there. I said, look, I was a professional critic. But you got to have thick skin, even as a critic, because if you're going to be dishing it out, you better be prepared to yep. take it, you know, because yep. you're messing with people's livelihood. Not messing with you're not you're, you're commenting on people's <laughs> livelihoods. So you should be, expect to get some commentary back, especially if oh. the comments are not fair. Right. Uh, as a professional, professionals sure. are trying to be fair. We always talk to the owners and talk sure. to the chefs before we publish. Uh, people on the Facebook, a lot of choices, a lot of different options for everybody. Not yeah. everything's for everyone, and that's uh, that's yeah. the model. Model. All right, so uh, I sent you a little video clip this morning, one of my favorite shows, The Sopranos. But that's why I wore the tracksuit. <laughs> oh, I was gonna say, I'm <laughs> that's like, why I wore the tracksuit. I was like, it's like and the horn. <laughs> but I no, noticed that you do have a uh, capless head, even though places like this, obviously, you're on the beach. You don't mind if somebody's wearing sandals. Oh, this is and, yeah, this is casual, and even a tank top, sure. and swim trunks, or a baseball cap. Yeah, this is a, this is a casual, uh, right. you know, Mexican restaurant on the beach. However, runway eighty four. So I didn't know if you have a dress code there. And earlier this week, somebody was commenting they went out to an Easter dinner uh, at one of our favorite places, Tropical Acres, and they were a little bit dismayed because. There was a sea of baseball caps in the main dining room, sure. not the bar area. Sure. How do you feel? And again, I, I think it's a generational thing. But how do you feel about baseball caps in a kind of not formal white linen, but in a kind of proper dining room at dinner time, especially on a holiday? Well, well a couple of different things. Uh, so to answer that question is, you know, I'm a firm believer and the way I was raised and always around restaurants and good restaurants and stuff. And I'm a gentleman. I think no baseball caps. A male should take off his hat in a restaurant, in a dining room. Yes. You're on the beach. You're on, you know, for a lot of beach. You're casual, flip flops. That's that's fine. But in a restaurant, you know, a, a real restaurant, and you know, it's a hall, especially a holiday. I would recommend not wearing a hat. Okay. Yeah. And, and um, but you know, if you saw somebody, <laughs> would you do? Wait, the how do you handle it? How do you handle it? I mean, if well, well do you have th- a, a do you have a no cap policy at Runway? Right, or, right. Or so yeah, so allow- so. We have a couple of different things. So we have a taco craft. We have right. no dress code. Yeah, it's casual. Yeah. We have a speakeasy, the apothecary inside pizza craft, which we have a dress code. Okay. And we have certain rules, house rules, which is also no. Uh, That's like a club. Yeah. No, lounge, like- no Jagger bombs and no. Oh, keto, really? So whatever okay. is, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow, so we have okay. a strict. Uh, is gambling allowed? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, That's what and then Anthony's Runway 84, you know, that's a 1960s style supper club. We right. have a very, very strict dress code. Right. Yeah. yeah. Very strict. I always wear my shoes in there. I don't. Sure. I don't come sure. in sneakers. Is sneakers allowed? I've never even. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah you can wear sneakers as long as you have nice hot. pants. Yeah. Yep. How about okay. mayo in a tank top? <laughs> no, no. no. And and that's one thing we just don't bend on. Them. No, yeah. that's one thing we don't bend on. Just it's part of the experience, right? So you know, there's different concepts for different people, and yeah. um, you know, Runway 84 yeah. when we were developing it and uh, for the relaunch, we wanted to have that Coca Cabana Supper Club yeah, vibe. Yeah, yeah. And what Fort Lauderdale was a place, a big night, and people, 99.9 percent of people, I'm there every night. Thank me. Come in. I'm I so just, happy I get aura. to dress up. I'm so happy I get to put on a jacket. My husband actually dresses up. He's not wearing his Tommy Bahama shirt. <laughs> and, and we get that a lot. The thing. When, yeah. you, when you go into a place and everybody is putting on their Sunday best, you, you you know, I, I tell people, like, 
uh, yeah, I wouldn't just go there in, uh, you know, in jeans and, and sneak. You got to put sure. on a nice yeah. shirt. Put listen, on you a don't nice have to wear a suit slacks. every night, but listen, no, not talking jacket and tie. If you wear a t shirt and nice shorts there. and you walk in, it's kind of like, you know, the whole crowd, like the music stops <laughs> and everybody looks. <laughs> yeah. So we have no sandals, no tank tops, no sports athletic wear, no hats. And you had to have a collar shirt. Right. And, and uh, now I don't know if anybody would ever take the Tony Soprano approach where he just goes up to the guy and says, take off your hat. I well, we have, you a, we have a, yeah, so it's, the clip is very accurate, but we have a, <laughs> and we have like hot a, dogs here and they took the bleaches out three years ago. That's so we have said. a two pronged approach. So yes. the first prong is the manager on, on duty will Ask let the kindly. gentleman. Yeah. You know, first of all, listen, some people don't care. The valet lets them know, sir, before you valet, okay. you're still going to have to pay for valet. Okay. I would not walk in there with shorts. And some guys say, it. I know Mark or I this. And the best one is. Then I'll just go have dinner on my yacht. Then you know what? Go have dinner on your yacht because we don't care. <laughs> right. So enjoy. There's somebody okay. else so is going to take past the valet. They get past the valet. Then the hostess lets them know. And then they'll just go to the bar and say they ignore everybody. Then the manager will give them, just let you know, sir, about our dress code. And if that doesn't work, then they'll come get myself or Anthony. Then we'll do the little arm around the shoulder. <laughs> and then we'll walk them to the front door. But you won't take them out of but Tony, Tony, Is a jacket yeah. required? It's Tony, not required. No, no, not no, required. No, 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 no required, but recommended. Okay, but recommend. Tony... Soprano, I mean, yeah. he was a little bit harsh, but then he ended up going back to the table and told the captain over and said, send them a bottle of Montepulciano. Oh, yeah. yeah but uh, So here's a funny story. That yeah. just happened. Yeah. Oh, really? And, you know, and it was a holiday and an Easter and said, listen, it's early in the evening. We'll let them sit in the Cypress room away. And you know what? Next time you come back, we'll get you some drinks, whatever. And it's a very cordial thing. And um, almost I've never had an issue in serving thousands of people a week ever. Right. Yeah, and, no. and, you know, the people on the Facebook group are saying, well, what does it matter to you what somebody is wearing or not wearing, if they have a hat or not? And it's just, sure. again, it's about an atmosphere, an ambiance yeah, that you're sure trying does. to create, you know, so. Different restaurants for different people. So if you want to come casual, come grab some tacos on the beach. And if you want to eat $250 dry-aged porterhouses yeah. with live music <laughs> and a high-end atmosphere, <laughs> then you need to dress up. That's, yeah, yeah. that's basically that it. It also thing. not even shows respect to the uh, – to to the restaurant, I but see. think about it's funny is the people that don't dress up is never the, the women. They right. come all dressed up, looking so dresses beautiful, yeah. enjoying the atmosphere, and they're the ones that complain if they see somebody in, in a hat. Yeah, or yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. My neighbor, she came in last night. They all look dressed to the nines. Ooh, and they were there. Like yeah, very. Uh, uh, you know, eight women. And they said, we know Michael Mayo. So, yeah, they had this. <laughs> oh, yeah. I bet get that a lot, yeah, But yeah. in this case, it was actually accurate. She is It's my usually neighbor. like a heavy set guy from the track. So it was really <laughs> nice to see. So, so it was nice to see. Uh, if your uh, wife gives you the usual, are you wearing that? Yeah. yeah. And you're not going exactly. to runway 84. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you probably uh, need to redo let's it. Let's do yeah. cheers. I uh, will say salute. Let's do it. Yeah, let's go. Uh, beautiful uh, stuff. Beautiful. Right. Yeah, this is a salute. Yeah. 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 jalapeno is a lovely yeah, yeah, drink. Isn't it nice? What did you get to there, the new To the new mayo. I miss you, man. You're going to drink, so good luck. Yeah, there you go. I have the watermelon margarita. We'll never hit another race. One of my favorite things. It's light. Oh, wow. Speaking of races, Keeneland opening up tomorrow. We're going to be at Gulfstream for our usual Fridays at 10 Palms, but... Joey and crew from Cafe Seville uh, are up heading there. up to Keeneland for a couple of days of fun and, uh, well, I don't want to say debauchery, yeah. but they're, uh, and Geech is going too. I saw CJ last night uh, and he is all stoked. Uh, they're trying to scope out Just some winners. Robin's oh, around. Robin's I was going to say, uh, we yeah, can get you over there and have you chat. Uh, I'll tell you what, let's take our second and break we'll and then we're going to put, Robbins. we'll have a little chat with Chef Robbins Martinez. Yeah, when we come back from break. From break. Uh, we'll be back with more on the lunchbox at Taco Craft Lauderdale by the Sea after these words. All right. Here for Prezzo Italian Restaurants, two locations, Boca Raton at Park Place on Military Trail and Palm Beach Gardens in the PGA Commons on PGA Boulevard. Contemporary Italian cuisine with house-made pastas, wood-fired pizzas, salads, veal, chicken, and of course their famous focaccia bread with oven-roasted garlic bulbs. In Garlic We Trust is their slogan, and you can trust Prezzo for a great experience with gracious service and tremendous value. Open seven days featuring brunch, lunch, dinner, and happy hour. Great wine deals and full bar at both locations. For reservations and more information, go to eatprezzo.com. You know, when the Brooklyn boy in me wants a good bagel with Nova or some matzo ball soup 
homemade knishes or a great deli pastrami sandwich on rye, you know where I go? Grandpa's Cafe in Dania Beach. It's been around a long time, an institution, but a little over a year ago, a pair of New Yorkers came in, bought it, and refurbished the place. It's beautiful, and they are now serving great breakfast, brunch, lunch. They've got the omelets. They've got Eggs Benedict. They've got all kinds of great baked goods like Ruggleth. Grandpa's is just off Federal Highway on Southwest 1st Street in Dania Beach. It's open seven days. Go in there. Tell them that the lunchbox sent you. When people come to me and say, Mike, where should I go out to eat? I got guests coming from out of town. Where should we go? Cafe Seville. That's the answer. 2768 East Oakland Park Boulevard. It's a Fort Lauderdale perennial serving the finest in Spanish and continental cuisine in a cozy, friendly, comfortable setting. Joey Esposito and Sally, his better half, they've been running the place for a long time. It's been open since the 1980s. They got great Spanish classics like paella, shrimp with garlic sauce and all kinds of great seafood dishes. The stuffed veal chop, oh, that's my favorite. Go to Cafe Seville. It's open every day but Sunday at 5 p.m. for dinner. Tell them that the Lunchbox Mayo and Defo sent you. Do you like burgers? Do you like wings? Do you like late-night food and sports on big-screen TVs and cold beer and friendly vibe and great people? Then you want to check out Shenanigans, 1300 South Federal Highway in Dania Beach. You go to Shenanigans, you get yourself all the good stuff, the fresh fish every day, the black and grilled wings, and, of course, the kitchens are open late. Go there, tell them that the Lunchbox Mayo and Defo sent you. All right, we're back on the Lunchbox at Taco Craft, uh, Taqueria, and Tequila Bar. We are at the corner of A1A and Commercial Boulevard. This area is hopping. The highest traffic intersection in East Broward County. Really? Like said, they're here more than Los Salsa and A1A. This and is- it's, it gives me great pleasure to welcome to the Lunchbox, Robin, Chef Robins Martinez, who's hey, been Robins. your guy. Hey, how you chef, doing, guys? Chef, chef, for a long chef. time. Um, welcome to the Lunchbox. Thank, Thank you for you. this. Well, they, he said that I got a nice surprise. surprise in that store. was nice. I thought it was going to be chef. a pizza from Pizza Craft or something, but no, man. delicious. Thank you, Chef. Oh, nobody stay, right? Yeah, <laughs> that is a beautiful piece of meat. Thank you for being able to get it, you know, to perfection. Grill it here at you know a kitchen that uh, you don't usually are equipped uh, for. Uh, yes, yeah, a yeah. little hard for us. Fine. I mean, when you have passion, you can do it whatever you want. That's you know it. I mean? When you yeah. have passion, you do whatever you want. I love that one. Tell me the story about how you guys met, Robbins. Uh, you, uh, you know, what was your background? <laughs> um, my background is I went to the Cordon Bleu in uh, 2003 or 2004. Where were you born and raised? Uh, I'm born, born in Cuba. Cuba. And, uh, oh, okay. Yeah, and um, I come back to the United States in 2000, I think 2000, mm-hmm. and going to the culinary school for uh, two years. And after that, I started working in the Miami restaurants. I started working in the Four Seasons. China oh. Grill. China Grill. High end stuff. stuff. High end stuff. Yeah. He told us, um, he told us, I tried to take experience for all these restaurants. And uh, I mean, my, my father in the, in the hotel in Primos. I'll tell him the true story. Yeah. He was a customer uh-huh. of ours. So every night he'd leave one of his restaurants and he'd come sit at the bar at my father and I's first restaurant, Primos, down in Miami. Oh, okay. And Robbins was a customer coming yeah. in, hanging out, talking every night. And uh, at that time, my father convinced Robbins, hey, all that corporate stuff. We need a chef. You're good. Well, she told you Italian. Come join the team. And then- <laughs> we'll just say yeah. It's that. happened for a couple of years. You know, I mean, it's a great experience. Yeah, I'm very was, young. Yeah. So you very young. Start- he was 22, 23 years old. Awesome. Oh wow. Yeah. yeah. And then so you started off with Mark when he started the, the and other start concepts. Working together and, and in the kitchen. That's right. Also. So I watched the bar. He cooked. And my dad managed. Okay. Oh, wow. And I was a real estate broker, but the real estate downturn wiped out my dreams. This is an 05, 07, or whatever. 07. Yeah. 07, yeah. 08. So I was watching the bar. He was running the kitchen. My dad was running the floor. Every night we would plot and plan. And if you know if you ever worked with your father, but it's not the easiest <laughs> thing. <laughs> no, it's not easy. <laughs> not, not, not easy, man. So we, we actually said, Robbins, I said, we just kept talking. I said, listen. Let's make American food, American food, uh, high-end American food. And we fell in love with burgers. There was yeah, kind that of a, Rock no, Burger concept. Yeah, so wow. great. We, with the Brock Burger started, we, uh, Robbins and I at Primo's on a pen and paper. Okay. And we were having a beer and uh, talking. and Those mac the, and cheese and skillets, and, I still dream of those. Yeah, yeah that's good it. Stuff. Yeah. And I said, let's open up the restaurant in Broward. And then we went up to uh, him or she's where I used to uh, right. go up because I grew up up here. Right. And we uh, saw a restaurant for sale. We knocked on the door and said, okay. And then we... <laughs> Right next to Hammershie Bar and Grill was called Limoncello. Okay. Yeah, if you remember that. I do. Yeah. I do. I used to go to that whole block all the yeah. time. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, one of our customers down in Miami said, well, I don't know what you guys can do. I'm in. And he wrote a check, and we opened up in uh, Broward County. 
and yeah. the rest is history. And then you just we opened sixteen restaurants together, Robbins yeah. and I, since two thousand. And you're still speaking to each other, so that's, yeah, that's yeah. A, a couple of fights, couple yeah, fights couple here and there, a couple. Uh, <laughs> but also had the same thing, also have passion for yeah. for this business, and yeah. that's the more important. And now, so I didn't realize. So going having runway eighty four in the portfolio portfolio now, it's kind of like going back to your roots High with yeah. the the way you guys started. Yeah, I was off talking and, for that for a long time to have something uh, in the portfolio like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, tell me, Chef Robbins. I mean, when you were working, you know, uh, China Grill, you know, some of these big corporate after. Is it a, even though this now is a growing kind of, you know, it yeah. is, it's, it's still, still family a, for all still mobile. has a family feel and you're able to experiment, tinker, put new things on a menu and, and, and just tell me about the freedom that you got in terms of uh, coming up with new items. Uh, I think I have free for doing whatever oh, I yeah. want and uh, in this kitchen, this uh, thing uh, trust me very, uh, very well and um, whatever doing, I do it for the reason, it's not like, a, oh, I like this, I want to put in the menus, I like, it's something for the customers, something for people to enjoy, it's no I right. know that kind of chase. That's what I like, and that's what I want to put in the menu. Right. right. You're, like you're, you're, you're always... you brought out table side Dover soles, two pound Dover soles, deboned table side, lemon butter sauce, like beautiful fish. Very nice. Amazing it's stuff. One of my favorite things. Yeah. No, yeah. but oh. like you said, you're not thinking about high concept and it pleasing some snooty no. foodie no, no, critic no, no. like me. You're, you're thinking food. about sales. Like, okay, what's going to sell, but also be delicious and innovative. Listen, and there's nothing better to make the customer happy, right? When yeah. the customer's going to you and say the food's amazing and Oh, I don't have that for a long time. You remember me, my past. That's what you, what you, what you do with this. You I mean you do that for the customers? You do that for the, for these little moments. Yeah. Yeah. I, so what I, what I find interesting, Mark talked about it every summer. He says he tours the country to yeah, we always get travel. new tastes. So you guys are going together. What do you take from other areas? What, what are you trying to get when you go? Because I find that I never even thought about that before. And doing this show, I sort of learned restaurant tours and chefs are great about, like a lot of industries, people competitors. They're like, no, no, you guys. Oh, embrace we support. Yeah, we working support together, embrace. learning, growing. So, what are some of the things you look for when you're going traveling to try and get new flavors to bring down here? You mean when you're going to a different, uh, like a Chicago, New York? I mean, these people sometimes is is um is more high in okay, Miami. One step you know? ahead, you know. Let me step ahead, and it's nice when you bring some ideas back to to South Florida, and and you do a couple of different things with these ideas. You know, what I mean, it's not like a copy. You you bring the ideas to South Florida, and Try to put it together in the play. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, so, like, our biggest trip is next month. Uh, every year, I think this is our tenth year in a row. Ten years in the row. Yeah. Ten, this is our ten-year anniversary of going to the National Restaurant Show NRA show, not the is rifle. That always thing. in Chicago. <laughs> or Chicago. Every year in Chicago. So nice. uh, May twentieth, twenty-first. So we'll go there two days before, two days after. We stay the whole thing. Uh, not only enjoy the show, which we'll do deals on equipment and vendors and try new products. We'll also have our list of you know. Two dinners a night for four nights. Right. Um, very meat heavy. <laughs> but like, wait, I was like, I mail, I was like, like it's like he it's, didn't even want to come. Want to come? Like that's four days of bang bang. We call that the, the bang bang. bang. When yeah, you double headers, yeah, triple headers. That's crazy. Triple, it's crazy. Um, not as crazy as when we did the sandwich tour for Henry's, which oh, yeah. we could talk okay. about. That was the wildest trip of them all. We did like uh, four cities and thirty six sandwich shops in like thirty <laughs> hours, forty hours. Now you. It got me. to the point it was really bad. I, I could imagine. Yeah. I don't know if there's yeah. purging you involved. Still? But yeah, it was bad. Just gotta... And we were on a budget. We shared a hotel. Oh yeah. That was bad. Oh yeah, that was bad. That's a great. That's a great spree on that tour. Actually, is uh, you see a lot of different peoples and what the people can do it, and uh, a lot of passions. You have a lot of uh, restaurants and little one chef running. Uh, you do everything for yourself to the big corporations. I mean, you see everything when you do with this kind of tour. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now, Mark told me earlier this month, I was shocked that you have never been to New Orleans. Is that I've right? never been to New Orleans. Have you been have to you New Orleans? Been to New Orleans? Neither right. of you. Never. I'm going to give you a little pointer yeah. as a wow. food guy. Yeah. And if you are a restaurateur that is yeah, always yeah. looking to expand their horizons, chef, go to that city and just hang out <laughs> for four days. And all just, right. All right. Um, I'll give you a list. And you'll come back with some ideas. And I love it. All the right. The diversity there, it used to be just all the kind of Cajun. Creole, Cajun, you know, the heavy sure. sauces. But that city has also grown up and evolved. And now you've got a lot more influences coming in from Africa, the Caribbean, Asia. Oh, that's nice. um, it's like a even culinary hub, New Orleans. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's become, a, you know, chefs Emerald, are attracted. Emerald, Emerald's town there. Emerald started at, well, yeah. K. Paul, Paul yep. Prudhomme, yep, Paul and Prudhomme. Emerald Lagasse were kind of the the Godfathers, along with the Brennan family. And, of course, you got the classic Galatoires. you got to check out one night at, you know, one of those classics. But then, you know, like uh, 
Israeli chef, uh, I think uh, Alon Shaya, he opened up a couple of places there. So they're putting all these kind of spins, New Orleans, Louisiana spins on other sure, cuisine. It's sure. just a really exciting place. So I'm 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 kind of big fan. Proselytizing for right. you guys well, to go check it out. Time. Because- I think I right, know how much uh, you guys appreciate good food. And, so uh, when you see line 17 on the PNL that says Nola expense trip, <laughs> just go blame you. <laughs> blame just it on me. Blame it on nah, me. Yeah, right. Uh, but it's uh, it's all good. But yeah, I love the way you guys just are always constantly on the hunt, exploring new things, new concepts, new flavors, and the way that you spin. You know, people that are looking for their, I guess, would say traditional. You know, roadside talk. You know, taco stand. They're, yeah, we have one or two like that, but yeah. this is going to be definitely a hybrid. Right. We call them chef-driven versions of the classics. And if that makes sense. Obviously, it's working. Yes. Yeah, it's working very well. Working very well. Working very well Coral actually. Springs opens up in June. We're super excited. West Bar. It's going to be, I think, even our, my most spectacular design and build. This is going to be exciting because I can't wait to see. Oh, I can't we have wait. So I, much. I'm so pleased that we're taking the full taco craft tour. Yeah, that's so cool. Yeah, I and can't. the build out's going to be something nobody's seen before here. Really? At West Broward. Yeah, yeah we, the building's cool. Yeah, but the inside is a lot of exotic stuff. A lot of stuff from Indonesia, Thailand, uh, Polynesian, uh, custom. Uh, chairs and we have a uh, live living walls i got a uh, some interesting stuff really? have there nice. that's got some some local artists living from walls. Wind, yeah living walls local yeah. artists from windwood doing a lot of murals it's really going to feel that you're in tulum tulum oh, trees nice. palm trees uh you know and that you i know you talked about your wife gets involved with a lot of the stuff like who comes up with the design for a lot of these things. Robbins does the food. I do the design. Robbins does the food. And my wife does the uh, beverage program. Beverage. And she's yeah. also a sommelier. But she designs yeah. the cocktails. And just get, I come up with some ideas. Chef takes them to the next level. We all work together. And same with the drinks. And we, um, it, it all sounds fabulous. Again, the uh, brand, Taco Craft brand, keeps growing and evolving. And uh, kudos to you guys. We're going to take one more break. And it. then maybe uh, I heard talk about a tequila shot or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, we're going to try some different oh, tequilas good. when you're right. back. So we'll do that. Uh, we'll go to a break. And after then... our third and final. First, got to put in the good word about our That's friends it. at Delaware Chicken and Seafood Market in Hollywood. It's been there since the 1950s. It is the home of value, freshness, and quality. If you're going to be throwing any kind of, uh, oh, let's say, uh, Final Four watch parties or just having a home cookout, Masters is coming up. That's always good weather to just be chilling and grilling and watching some of the golf on TV. Uh, You want to go to Delaware. They have the freshest in not only their poultry, but, of course, they have steaks and pork and sausages and the star of the show, their prime, premier, pristine seafood, along with, of course, the seasonal specialty stone crab. I can't believe we're left down to like just three Three weeks weeks. left in stone crab season. So you get them while you still can until another season is in the books. Again, 4191 North State Road 7 in Hollywood. Uh, Go there. It is a beautiful place. Tell them the Lunchbox sent you. And we'll be back to wrap up this edition with shots. shots. No, we're sipping. We're sipping. sipping. Uh, After these words on the Lunchbox. All right. Food from a scratch kitchen, delicious drinks and house-made spirits from a craft bar, a great vibe inside and out with a spacious patio. I'm talking about Batch New Southern Kitchen and Tap, Fort Lauderdale, in the heart of the city at 525 North Federal Highway. It's open seven days for lunch, dinner, and weekend brunch with classics like fried chicken and waffles and shrimp and grits and creative items like pecan-crusted salmon and a fried green tomato BLT. And the drinks? Smooth sipping and so good. There's convenient free parking and a garage next door. Happy hour at the bar, an entire patio, four to seven Monday to Friday, and live music every Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. It's pet and people friendly and with cozy fire pits for when the temperature dips. For reservations and more information, go to BatchSouthernKitchen.com. Hey, it's Mayo here for Delaware Chicken Farm and Seafood Market. Since 1951, for over 70 years, the home of freshness. I've been a customer for over three decades, and it's the place to go for poultry, steaks, meats, and of course, their unbelievable selection of fish and seafood. They've got it all. Key West pink shrimp, grouper, snapper, lobster, and of course, Florida stone crab claws of all sizes. Don't forget their famous fish dip and a full selection of prepared foods. It's located at 4191 North State Road 7 in Hollywood, just across from the Seminole Classic Casino. Doug Carter and crew will take great care of you. Make sure to check out their weekly specials and daily catch online at DelawareChicken.com. 
Quality, value, freshness, that's the Delaware way. Tell them Mike Mayo and the Lunchbox sent you. If you like seafood in a comfortable setting, outdoors, even keel fish shack at the corner of A1A and Commercial Boulevard in Lauderdale by the Sea, and also now with a new location on Las Olas Boulevard. Those are my spots. Upscale food in a down-home setting. The chef owners, Dave and Brad, do a terrific job with all the seafood classics that you want. They have the best grilled oysters in town, bang bang shrimp, lobster rolls, and daily fish specials. They also have weekend brunch Saturday and Sunday. They have daily happy hour four to seven, and they also have other weekly specials like mussels on Monday and oysters on Tuesday. Go to Even Keel Fish Shack and tell them that the Lunchbox sent you. All right, we're back on the Lunchbox. Uh, Defoe, welcome back. Ah, oh, beautiful time I out here. I see a blue bottle, and I see kind of a pinkish <laughs> bottle. Is this a gender reveal party or something? Is somebody pregnant? Or That's what's exactly going on? what this is. <laughs> <laughs> so last time, if you recall, the first time we did all the margaritas yes. and did some tequilas. Last time we did mezcals. Yes. Right. And we tried different levels of mezcals. We, we tried did. the reposados and the aged mezcals. Yes. I like the reposados. So the when reposados we talk, are nice. Yeah, so when we talk about tequilas, we talk about a lot of people think, remember that tequila in college, that, yeah. Yeah, that weird swag. Oh, is that Cuervo? Yeah, yeah. The, gold, the gold with the worm. Silver or gold, yeah. Uh, the so worm. the market has really gone to higher-end tequilas now. We're doing a lot of stuff. Um, as you know, every celebrity has a tequila now. They're right. aged, uh, a lot higher-end, a lot smoother. So, Did we want to include are, these uh, young ladies in this picture? Yeah, we're going to have shots of tequila. We're going to get them all dressed up. Yeah, yeah. So we would have to card them first, Yeah, people. exactly. I do not want to get in trouble. So... <laughs> These two are what I've been drinking lately. These are my, just my personal favorite tequilas. He yeah. went all sarny he on me there fell, for a He second. almost fell he out just, of the chair. So, <laughs> yeah. so I couldn't yeah. help it. I mean, the scenery here is Just for some context, we, oh, we are on the beach. There's yeah. girls yes, walking yes, by yes, with yes. bikinis. It's Unbelievable, uh, easily yeah. to, easy to be distracted here. Yeah. Um, every right. team member on our team wants to work at this location. <laughs> <laughs> if you think about it, too, I mean, here you are by a beautiful beach, beautiful stretch of beach, uh, one of the most desirable places that you could come. And and look at the restaurant opportunities, including Taco Craft, of course. Oh, this is great. Right. You don't see this by a beach scene anywhere where you have this level of quality and number of choices. So, you know, what makes, you know, Lardo by the sea, not just because we're here, but I'm a big proponent is yeah. unlike Pompano and, and other parts, even Los Solas, it, this feels like you're in this little quaint it's amazing. beach. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. maybe like, in the north, uh, Rhode Island. Or so. I don't even know. I don't even know what you want to call it. Nantucket. Yeah. Cape maybe, Cod, yeah, like maybe a even small Santa Monica. Like a I don't know. Yeah. yeah. No. It's not overwhelming. It's not built up with high rises. It's got that quaint. When we looked at this location, what a and spot, yeah. when we looked at this location, that's when I said Anthony and Pat gave me an offer I couldn't refuse. Right. I, I didn't. I didn't want anything to do it. I didn't want to open any more restaurants. I didn't want to be lardo <laughs> by the sea. I said I don't go there. I don't hang out there. It's not for me. Um, I, I spent one night here with them, and we sat out here and looked around yeah. at the beach. I said, "Wow, this is such a great place." <laughs> and you know what? There's some great restaurants. I've been here a long time, but you know this is gonna be a cool place to do what we do. And yeah. uh, you had a vision, and, and yeah, now you got your headquarters and offices right yeah, down, right the down block. the street. I moved That's our office, funny. corporate offices so. here too. But it's great here. You can walk around, go to the beach. You want to clear your head? You go by the pier. And, you know, uh, we got yeah. lots of friends on this friends, block. Uh, even Dave, Keel, my buddy my, David, even Keel, they just yeah. opened on Las Solas. Now yeah, they can't get away from him. He's next to my house. That Tuesday oyster promotion. He does a great job. Shout out to David, even Keel. And I like, you know, I like the fact that you guys get it and that. When you see a lot of restaurants around you, it's not all competitors. It's it, it brings people here, and yeah, it's a rising tide effect. Area. I always say this. That uh, listen, people bring people. Um, I'm a big proponent. Is I want people to open up restaurants right next to me, just more the merrier. It's a, wow. that's an old school mentality. Yeah. I think you want to have you know a commotion is a promotion, and just get mm -hmm. a lot of bodies. And listen, it becomes a destination. Yeah. Oh, I'm yep. going to go have an oyster seed day. I'm going to have a margarita seat, Mark. I'm going to go see Vinny have a pizza. Yep. You know, um, Leone from Grand Forno just bought mulligans. I don't know if you heard oh, of that. I did not know that. Yeah, so yeah. Leone, uh, oh. Grand Forno, they just bought mulligans. They're doing um, oh, that's uh, they're doing a new uh, tapas news? concept with okay. the guys from, uh, I think, American tapas. Nice. Like that. Grand Forno yeah. is the awesome yeah, yeah, place. Good, so. good friends of ours. They do yeah. all our bread. Um, yeah. And uh, some focaccia for us. And then, you know, Peggy's got Aruba. So what else do you want? You got everything here. Everybody's a great neighborhood, great neighbors. And now once a month, we close this street down the third Friday of every month, and we do a concert. Right. I think really? Last time, like we, did, last time we did, there was like three or 4,000 people wow. here. It's a free, the only free concert in Broward. Oh, free concert. so everybody congregates. And the everybody stage is right come. here, right here, right Brilliant. in front of us, the yeah. stage. That's great. All idea. the way back, yep. And, uh. You know, nice. shout out to Lardo by the Sea, Mayor Chris. Yeah, Vincent. a little bit the of best. vision. Oh, yeah. the best, the it's best, nice. Yeah. And again, these places outside of the downtown Waterdale corridor now, you know, you're seeing pockets pop up. 
Plantation yeah, sure. Walk. Coral Springs has yeah. their areas. You got Lauderdale by the yeah, Sea. Yeah, listen, yeah, Pompano's up and coming now with yeah. all the stuff that they've done. So it's just, uh, listen, I tell people all the time, I lost those, come down to Lauderdale by the Sea. What is that? Come by, yeah. grab an ice cream, <laughs> walk around. Great restaurants. Yeah. It's great energy. It's nice. So. Well, we got distracted, uh, but oh, now back let's to back to the important stuff. All right, so we'll get back to tequila. This is what yeah. I've been drinking lately. Yes. Okay. So this is probably one of the hottest tequilas on the market right now. It came to market me a couple years ago. Uh, on the higher end side, this is called Comos with a K. Okay. And you know, all tequila is made in Mexico, obviously. Right. But this is a Mediterranean-style tequila. I don't it know what it means. Greek. Okay. Yeah, Comos. Yeah, yeah, Greek yeah. Comos is yeah. a Greek style. I feel like I'm on but Santorini in, with you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. My buddy Giorgio. Shout out to Giorgio. Santorini down South Beach, the best. Mm. Um, they make a Reposado. When we had the Reposado, the Reposado... A lot of action on this. Oh, morning. it's not it a Lauderdale oh, by yeah. the Sea remote show oh, yeah. unless we hear a siren. A siren at some Somebody's point. being taken off the track. Driven through the yeah. ballers <laughs> a few times. Yeah. So this here, as a as a reposado, is usually aged aged up to a year. Reposado is going to have a little bit of caramel in color. Ooh, caramel. So this is a reposado rosa. They have a rose finish to it. This is going to be a pink reposado. Oh, okay. One of the smoothest tequilas on the market. All right. And this one is going to be a, a añejo cristalino, which is the añejo is aged up to uh, one to two years. Dark, dark, amber in color, more, you know, caramel, oak and stuff. And they filter and take the color out of it. So this is a white, clear, okay. a white Añejo okay. and a pink Reposado. Um, so we'll do a little taste. I'll do a taste of each. Yeah, we're going we'll to give a little here. shot yeah. to all the boys. That, that's good. Okay. You yeah, know me. Yeah, I don't want to give a little shot. Yeah, to yeah, out of my head. Head. I got the hand of an Irish and I got a very heavy hand. I was going to say. And with That's my pickleball yeah. injury, I have no feeling. In Here we it. go. Yes, tell us go. about the pickleball injury. At, uh, what happened? Just playing too much? Oh, I fell in love with pickleball about a year ago. Yep. And I came from Salud. Southern. Well, let's get the tequila going here. You guys, guys should get a sip of this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Salud. 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 <laughs> so we're sipping, right? These, we're not I shooting it like it's a... He's offered about... Four 15-year-olds tequila as they walk by here. You know you the ABT I, is on the prowl during spring break, by the way. I wouldn't do well as an, uh, a no, restaurant owner. He would no, be no, uh, fined yeah. and shuddered within the... Uh, I'd be mean, like Jake LaMotta. Is this nickname, right? nickname P. Diddy or is that just oh, too, no. early, too, early, too, too early? Too early. Too early. Too early. It'd be the Jake LaMotta story. Okay. Okay. Maybe okay. R. Yeah. Kelly. Okay. Okay. Too early. <laughs> this is very nice. We took a bad turn, but... This is... It might because you showed us the mezcals and you showed us one yeah. where mezcal could be smooth. It is color. actually a rose. rose color, yeah, rose. It's, it's like very a smooth color. sipping. Very again, smooth. I used to. This not. is like the one that this is a lot smoother. It doesn't have that smokiness. And this it could be yours have... for about thirty-five dollars a shot. There you go. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So you sip right. the crap out of that. <laughs> That's uh, some premium stuff. Yeah, nice, right? Yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah, yeah. Very good. Um, should we move on to the yeah, shoot, blue? Yeah, the... yeah, we're going to finish this one, then we'll have the blue. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I guess I got it. You're shooting it? Is that what we're doing? All right. We'll <laughs> Shout out to Comos. Very great. Good tequila. Very Comos. good tequila. Yeah, Comos. Comos with a K. But it is made, obviously, in Mexico because all, all tequila, tequila has to be so from Mexico. Mexico. Yeah. Okay, wait. Have mm-hmm. champagne from like champagne. Like champagne, champagne. champagne. Tequila from oh. port from... <laughs> Yeah, has this uh, 100 percent blue agave? It has to be from. That's good. Yeah, just a little taste here. Yeah, just yeah. A little bit. And you know, it's a good, high quality stuff because they got those numbers on the bottles, like the yeah, lot number, the bottle yeah, this number. Is the, yeah, bottle number, lot number, small yeah. batch. Um, you know, you can get this at Total Wine. Um, I, I don't think I haven't seen it any other places in Broward. I've tried a few. Maybe I was actually at the. Uh, I think I was at NYY Steak last uh, weekend. We can have. They have it. A few. A few and places have it, but nice. very unique. All right, and this is the blue bottle, the clear. Yeah, so it's the Añejo. So this is aged more, usually dark caramel, dark finish. But they, Cristalinos, they take the uh, unfilter, they take the, the uh, color out of it and make it back into a white. But oh, doesn't, that, but does nice. not taste like your normal Blanco tequila that you're. No, it tastes like very smooth on the front end and very, like you said, caramel. caramel. See the caramel, caramel notes on the back end. There you Salute. go. My first uh, All right, right. And we do like Thank you, that. Thank you. Um, you're welcome. Well, Mark. We've learned a lot today. Yeah. We've eaten a lot today. We've shattered Ooh. my new temporary crown today. Uh, <laughs> that's it. That's it. We served some Myers. Right, uh, as long, as, long as it isn't in the front day. where all you're right. missing a tooth while you're on TV. That's then it's just oh, they're all good. Now. It was in the back, so yeah. nobody's going to see it. So just, uh, to, just to recap, though, yes. no hats, no sandals, no shorts. No shoes, okay. no shorts, no shirts, <laughs> yeah. um, no problems. We didn't even get into the dogs, oh, but uh, we talked about that ad nauseum. And, of course, our people at, uh, you know, we love Tim and, and Marissa at the Catherine. She texted me this morning while I was in the dental chair. Marissa Ballou, they operate the Catherine. The other day, somebody 
posted a review that was positive. They loved the food, but they started with all the negatives. And it was like a 700-word screed, and the first thing people see in all caps is disappointments. Yeah. So, like, it gives a false impression. So I gently corrected the woman saying, hey, maybe start with the positives and the fact that you love the food here yeah. and then get into maybe some of the things that you can improve upon because not everybody reads all the way down. And the woman got so... She okay, got but she, got, yeah, she got butt hurt and she pulled the whole post down, but then she posted listen, another thing last a key, night. A lot saying, of keyboard warriors. Come on down, come talk to us in person, come hang <laughs> yeah, out with yeah. me and Anthony. Uh, you know, but, everybody's but a Marissa with texted the me. She said, Boy, both me and you are getting dragged this morning. <laughs> like, yeah, and I'm getting drilled now in the mouth too. So that's uh not a pleasant start. But boy, has the day turned that around. Great lunch. Well, there you go. I think we're going to go uh, hit the beach spring break wow. for a little bit. We're going to finish out spring break. Yeah, we're, we're just going to try to keep started, Defoe yeah. out of trouble. It, he reminds me That's of Jim it. Sarney now. By the way, Jim <laughs> Sarney getting out of the hospital today, on Saturday, Saturday after one month, a full 30 days. Oh, wow. You know what's oh, great about that is he went in for an uh, outpatient procedure. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> and since then, he's been it's in terrible. there for a month. That's yeah, not yeah. even funny. One thing get, no, it's not. But terrible. thankfully, he is on the mend. And also, great news about my buddy Mark, the sheep who you've seen on the show a couple times, high school buddy. Had the kidney transplant. This is incredible. Uh, got the donor kidney from his wife. His wife was discharged from the hospital the day after the surgery, after giving up a kidney. And he's getting out of the hospital today. And uh, everything went well. Uh, yeah. Unbelievable. Wow. Unbelievable. Modern That's medicine crazy. is unbelievable. Unbelievable. Uh, un and, uh, yeah, so good news all around. We love the good health updates here. Uh, and uh, next month, hopefully... We'll be at Plantation Walk. Yeah, we're going to do right. Plantation Walk next month. And then we're going to, if I can get you on a Friday, we're going to do Runway on a Friday lunch. What we're going to do one day is a Late double lunch. header. We're going to We've go done straight, it before. We can. We'll go straight, straight at Friday's a different time. Right, yeah, well, no, we go straight from Gulfstream. We finish up there about 2 o'clock. The no, we'll head right over. Yeah, yeah. The, the bang bang, yeah, which the bang you bang. and Robbins are oh double header yeah, pros at. Sure. Oh, yeah. So uh, oh, yeah. if that's an Wait offer, should we go to runway first and then go to the track with everybody else? Uh, uh, so they don't there. open until like noon. eleven noon, noon, so that would be. Right. A little, uh, yeah. We're right. gonna do it on the later side. On the if we come on the later on. leg, then we stay through happy hour with yeah. Sydney at the bar. You know we'll have a couple of martinis. That's an offer I can't refuse. Have your girlfriend come meet us. We'll hang out the bar. Danielle will bring the wines. Runway eighty four. Can we get Fanduel TV at the bar? Yeah, we know no, <laughs> the touchy subjects. Is, oh, no okay. TVs at the bar. Okay. No. Oh, not at not at runway. Yeah, they no don't TVs. do. No that is either. not your sports bar. That right. is we want you to interact class. and enjoy. All right, beautiful. Interact and enjoy. All right, thanks everybody for coming out. Enjoy every taco. Enjoy every oh prime steak, and enjoy right. every sandwich. We'll see you tomorrow at Gulfstream Park. Awesome guys, thank you. Hey,